Uh, we're here this morning with Dr. Jocelyn Sylvester, who, um, with whom you're probably familiar, or at the very least, you're familiar with her work in celiac disease. She has done, she's doing the study or has done the study on, um, which is called the doggy bag study, which measures um, gluten in the food that people eat and, and really tries to follow it through the process. Um, this morning, she's here to talk a little bit about some other work that she's doing. And so, Jocelyn, and welcome. Um, if you can tell people a little bit about yourself to get us started. Thank you. I'm a, uh, it's great to be here and it's always nice to talk to people about what we're doing in research. Um, so I'm a pediatric gastroenterologist at Boston Children's Hospital and most of my time I actually spend doing research. And so as you mentioned, I've been doing several projects looking at gluten contamination and cross contact and really how much gluten is in a gluten free diet. My real area of interest is follow-up of celiac disease and what happens after the diagnosis and what's the best way to do that. Now, one of the things we do to diagnose celiac disease is we look at biopsies, and I also think we could improve how we look at biopsies. So I'd love to talk about a project I'm working on to look at a biopsies in a different way. Right. Um, so that it leads right to my next question. Um, I'm trying. What are, I'm trying. <laughs> What are the challenges with the current way of looking at biopsies in celiac disease? I know you've said in the past that we're still using methods that were developed 50 years ago, so they could be outdated. Exactly, that's true. We actually have had more advances in how we collect the biopsies than how we actually interpret them. And so right now, when patients have a biopsy for celiac disease, we're looking at the first part of the small intestine, and that's where the villi are. And the villi are absorptive and they really are kind of like a shag rug. So if you imagine that you have a bunch of fingers going up, which means that there's a 3D structure there. And so when we look at the biopsies, we slice them and we're looking them in at them as flat, but there's actually a 3D structure. And right now we're looking at how tall the villi are, how many inflammatory cells there are. Um, but one of the problems is how tall the villi are depends a little bit on how you cut it. And so some of the problems with biopsies relate to, first of all, sampling, because we have to check the right area because celiac disease can be patchy. And then once we have the biopsies, making sure that we orient them so that our pathologists can actually interpret them. Right. Uh, the, some of the work that you're doing now is aiming to identify genes that are related to inflammation and structural changes in the villi, um, which are both, both inflammation and those changes in the villi are issues in celiac disease. What's the easiest way to explain that work? So I, I think this is a great question. And really what we're asking is, we can see changes in the villi, but we know that there's lots of things that happen in the body before the villi become shorter, and that short villi actually function different than long villi. And so what the genes are is they're the messages that tell the body how to build the villi. And so what we're trying to do is see if we can look at those messages and maybe pick up the signals that things are changing before we see changes with our eyes. Right, right, makes sense to me. Um, so as uh, in order to um, do this work, uh, part of the um, funding for it came through the Pilot and Feasibility Award from Beyond Celiac. And this grant is designed to help scientists like yourself um, find the preliminary data that's needed to begin answering major questions about celiac disease and could lead to breakthroughs for a larger scale research. What do you hope to find along those lines? Yes, and I think that's a, that's a very important point and that these pilot grants are really some of the most important funding we get as researchers because in order to get grants from the big funding agencies like the NIH, the National Institutes of Health, they often want what they call pilot data, which is essentially, it's not enough to have a good idea. You have to have something to show that your good idea maybe has a reason that it could work out. And so what this grant is doing is it's giving us the opportunity to do the gene expression and measure gene levels in biopsies and try and correlate that with villus height and with inflammation so that we can then go and say, look, we think we have a technique, we want to validate it by looking in a different population or we want to apply it perhaps, you know, in something like potential celiac disease where we know that there's antibodies but the villi look normal. Is there actually something we can look at looking at a molecular level to see that these people actually have early changes of celiac disease? And so this grant is really important as a stepping stone to be able to justify doing a larger project. 
So the early funding then can be the um, spark, I guess, that ignites larger funding so that the study can keep um, revealing new things. Exactly. And so I think, you know, this is really important funding. It's also higher risk funding because it's earlier on in the process. And earlier on the process, there's more risk that it might not work out. Mm -hmm. But there's also more potential for reward because we're looking at biopsies in a completely different way. So as you say, it has the possibility to open up a new way of thinking about celiac disease, potentially a new way of assessing whether celiac disease is treated, a new way of assessing whether somebody has celiac disease. And I think particularly important for celiac disease right now is we're actually starting to get therapies other than a gluten-free diet and we need some way to know that they're working mm -hmm. and looking for vellus atrophy and these short villi which may be a later finding in celiac disease is probably not the best way and so this may be a way to sort of see these early signs and not have to make people as sick to show that our drugs work right so in other words it's a technology that could be used um it's, a, it's research into a technology that can be used in research. So, so yes, used in research um, and also used clinically, mm -hmm, uh, which mm -hmm. is I think what is exciting about it is, yes. um, because one thing about how we measure the genes is we talked earlier about the fact that these villi are 3D and that how you slice them matters. But when we're looking at these samples, we're actually taking the entire biopsy. And so we don't have to slice the biopsy in the right way because we're looking for an average over a bigger area. Mm -hmm. So. Um, it gives us sort of more complete information on that tissue sample. It also avoids some of the complications by just looking under the microscope and hopefully will give us some tools to have another way of describing is this celiac disease. You know, even if we think about follow up right now, mm -hmm. it's hard to know if somebody had total vellus atrophy, now they have partial vellus atrophy. We don't have a great way of quantifying that to know how much better they are. And so this would potentially be a way to look at sort of baseline versus follow-up. And that's one of the aims of our grant is to see if we can see a difference there. Right, so then it, um, it can aid in diagnosis and management both. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so I think if you think of an analogy, um, if you think about cancer, um, now, when we diagnose cancers, we often look for particular markers. So in breast cancer, we often talk about HER2, which is a protein that's targeted by Herceptin, which is one of the chemotherapies. And so we know if your cancer has this protein, then you're likely to respond to this therapy. And so it gives us a better idea than when we used to just look at the biopsy and say, okay, this is breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And so we'd like to be able to do the same thing with celiac disease to look at the biopsy and not just say, okay, this is vellus atrophy, but say, this is celiac disease and here's some idea of how active it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds exciting to me and um, we look forward to uh, the day when you get through the study and there are results and they're published and we'll all be celebrating. Yes, we're very excited and we're hoping to get some, results, some preliminary data soon so that we can see how things are going. Great, great, so great. I think the most important thing too is to say thank you because as you mentioned, it's impossible to do this research without support and having the pilot grant is really what made this study possible. And so we're indebted to uh, Beyond Celiac for really letting us be able to explore this area. Uh, right, and as you uh, know, and, and uh, the word we're trying to spread is that the support of research is very important to us. It's really our mission. So, well, uh, thanks, Jocelyn. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. And um, we know how busy you are and you've got lots going on in your life, um, including a new puppy. So <laughs> we especially appreciate your being here today. <laughs> Thank you. It's always great to talk to you. Okay. Okay, great.